So today I have on the show Ruth Ellen, uh, who is a sort of a business coach, and particularly she helps women, she helps business women, especially if they've got some sort of spiritual side. But what I really like about it, she's, she's, uh, she tries so many different things, uh, so many different methods of, uh, of marketing and stuff, and she's very good at expressing herself and uh, creating content. So I hope you enjoy the show. Uh, let's get started. Morning, Keith. Morning. So should I call you Ruth or Ruth Ellen? Um, Ruth Ellen, please. Ruth Ellen. Well, lovely to meet you. Um, so um, how are you today? Yeah, I'm well. I'm good. I am sort of ready to go for the day. Uh, what about you? Uh, yeah, same. Yeah, I've already been um, down to the river for a walk. So uh, so what's that, that backdrop behind you? That's quite intriguing, uh, of the stars. Yeah, what just you about you just like stars, or is it to do yeah, with... like the moon and astrology types things? I think yeah. it's quite fascinating in this unexplored world up there. Um, yeah. and it's just like just to always remind myself that it's the um, I guess we are it's bigger than just us, there's so much sure. more. Yeah, we're totally insignificant, aren't we? When you look at how vast the uh, the cosmos is, and uh, okay, we yeah. talk about us, don't we? <laughs> so, um, okay, so well, we haven't met before, so maybe to to start off with, maybe you can just sort of tell me uh, a bit about uh, your story, or how you got to be um, where you are today. Yeah, sure. So I started off. I'd say I started off in corporate, working for. Um, a travel management company called Expedia, but their business arm. So doing lots of business to business work, doing telesales back in the day um, on the phone, like hundred calls a day and being completely um, in awe of, of, of just being able to speak to people, build relationships up with them. Mm -hmm. um, and then I got more intrigued when was turning over to sort of online marketing on how funnels would work because we'd always get leads from Dun and Brand, Dun and Brand Street right. and the leads very good quality and we put them into the CRM and it would be like we'd have to reintroduce ourselves and it's almost like people didn't know who we were and yeah. um, the leads were really not that great so I, I, I was curious to learn how to do inbound marketing yeah. just for my own peace of mind as well um, so I, I kind of went down this rabbit hole of learning about SEO and learning about what was the tools and methodology about inbound mm. um, I stayed with corporate for a while and then I left and I started to do SEO for a company mm. um, and work on on their business um, and then I kind of got more intrigued into coaching them because it wasn't always just about um, changing keywords and, and things like that it was about people's mindsets around it as well so I studied um, business coaching, um, certified in that, certified in life coaching as well. Um, and then over a period of time, I kind of discovered more about modality of healing. That it, you know, coaching's great, but there's an element that's also missing in terms of maybe hypnotherapy and changing mindsets more rapidly, um, especially because most people want to change, but their subconscious just won't allow it. So I got intrigued by NLP, and so I started to study those types of things and then so that's where I am today. I'm, I'm kind of like, I've got a son who's got autism and I found out through my own journey, I'm dyslexic and dyspraxic later on in my 30s. Right. And I, it, it gave me this opportunity to work with people that were neurodiverse, yeah. um, find out what their struggles were, but also to learn, it wasn't just about the strategies and going, the you know, coping strategies, it was more so about mindset and some healing and some trauma. So I held retreats called... Um, Healing from the Parental Wound, um, Dyslexic Edition. And it was all about those stories um, that, have, that we've owned and taken on board as ours. Mm. And so I've just been doing that work and now I'm, I'm helping spiritual business women specifically work through their spiritual awakening process um, and helping them with their business as well, um, based on some of the final stuff I've done already before. Yeah, that sounds great because uh, I think um, well, a lot of people have some sort of uh, spiritual interest in spirituality or or some spiritual vision, but then when they come to work, they sort of put all that to one side and they find it hard to sort of merge the two worlds. Yeah, and it's also interesting as what you're saying about uh, autism and neurodiverse and that sort of thing because I noticed in your LinkedIn um, profile the uh, the tagline is 
helping spiritual biz women to become unapologetically visible using the SHE method. So they run soul aligned businesses without the hustle. And then you've got using hypnotherapy and DBT. Uh, yeah. And of course, DBT is dialectical behavioral therapy, isn't it? Mm -hmm. I know that's useful for people with borderline personality disorder and things like that, because I've got a friend who's sort of doing that. So I had a sense that you were sort of targeting, I mean, there's so many people with some sort of issue like that, that it's, I think it's a great sort of niche uh, to, to work with. Yeah, and obviously because of your background of your son and everything like that, that gives you a lot of insight into... Yeah, uh, and I think DPT, I studied CBT as well, but I thought DBT is so great because of the acceptance element. Right. As we don't accept where we're at, we're kind of trying to dismiss it and trying to move forward and leave mm -hmm. that stuff behind. But the acceptance element of it and the mindfulness as well, which I studied, was so helpful because it's like, well, we're accepting where you're at, we're acknowledging you, especially in this climate as well. It's probably more important than ever to acknowledge people where they're at, acknowledge that they don't have all the answers, acknowledge that they're stuck, and then to give them tools so that they can actually feel more unstuck and empowered. So, yeah. yeah. Yeah, because people don't have tools, don't they? they? They just come repeating the same behaviour and they think it's everyone. I think it's like the outside world, everything else, and they've got no control. And the only solution is to change the outside world, but then they keep on changing it and then it never works. They have to keep on changing, 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 and they end up in the same mess. So then they realise they have to sort of look inside and just become more aware of what's going on and how they're responding and how they can change things and I think that's where the mindfulness and the DBT and, and so on come, come into it but I think also one-to-one -one work helps particularly with that because people have their own blind spots so that's probably why it's particularly useful to work with someone like you who can reflect back to them like a mirror and sort of give them sort of way reflect back their behaviors to become more aware of what's going on yeah I think I think one-to-one -one works really great because it it gives people that container I think yeah. what when I wanted my own journey, went through my own journey and wanted that help, it was, the group was too overwhelming for me because everyone had this, so many different challenges that I felt almost like voiceless. Mm. Uh, when I did speak up, it had to be loud and in your face in order to get noticed. Yes. Um, and so one-to-one -one just gives people that permission to be like seen and heard. So totally. Yes, that's right. Because I mean, I've done group stuff myself as a participant and uh, I know that, uh, some people yeah find it preferable to just stay in the corner and not say anything and hope that the attention doesn't go to them because it can it can it's scary you know to reveal your innermost stuff in front of a group is is quite scary for a lot of people so yeah. you know, one to one is obviously better for for people like that mm. and, and if you think about ndas as well like non disclosure agreements yeah the, the coach has that with you maybe they, they make you sign something but the people in the group don't have that that's so right they could screenshot that they could you don't know their intentions you don't know their sure you're, you're thinking everybody is on that same page of being that nice person yeah, yeah. no and the reality is being vulnerable in front of people that you don't know yeah. is very challenging if you don't even have that trust built up with them yeah <clears throat> okay that's great so i'd like uh, to just um share my screen and just uh look at some sort of online stuff so that's your linkedin page um <clears throat> so this is your this is your website yeah R ruth hyphen ellen dot com uh yeah. there's a lot of stuff on it <laughs> let's go to the top yeah so uh i mean i'm i'm yeah i'm, I'm very impressed by how much stuff you've created blogs podcasts videos you know you've sort of done everything really um and uh all your different offerings. Uh, I had a look at some of them. So this is your uh, podcast. Yep. So what does SHE stand for? So it stands for shifting, healing and expanding. Okay. Yeah. And is that something you came up with? That yeah. Acronym? Yeah. It, it just came to me when I was speaking to, I was, I was trying to figure out how I do, how I deliver what I do. And it's always great to like try to find a method that kind of is easy to digest. And so, yeah, I, I just thought, well, we're all shifting. We're all looking to heal. And we, the end result is that expansion and being accountable. For yeah. That. Yeah. That's great. And yeah, and obviously it's a play on words with she because you've got a female audience. Um, so, uh, and it's great you've got a podcast and you've started to talk to 
people you call that yeah the the, the she can she can oh yeah she can do it great uh and <laughs> so that's that and then you have uh a um do you do you use anchor for the podcast by the way i do use anchor yeah i use yeah. um yeah i was going to try to use the other tools but i thought anchor was just basic and it, it just does the job right it's so easy it's not i use anchor for my podcast yeah, yeah. it's great um so uh and then you've got a goddess master class where you can register to activate your goddess power and yeah. i think uh and that's great i think that goes straight into facebook messenger i think it did yeah i think it does. yeah got to change that but yeah there was a it just one way to build my funnel one way to build my list of yeah, yeah. oh so you are going to change that yeah, because what because it's on replay now. I've, I've got a landing page on in within the website. So what happens now is they register for it. Um, yes. Actually, no, they register for it. They get the link through through the bot, and then it goes back to my website so they can see the replay. So. Oh, okay. So the final is already set up with the yeah. Is that the many chat bot is it that's used for yeah. Facebook Messenger, and then they're added to your list, your Messenger list. So it's something I thought about doing myself, having um a, a bot and a Messenger, and I, I I did I did sort of set it up, but I don't know. It's another thing to have to worry about, isn't it? But I know it is very effective having a, a Facebook Messenger list in terms of communicating with. Your audience because there's a much higher open rate i think with yeah person. definitely with yeah. higher open rate higher engagement and like you can the segmentation is so much easier just to see as well like what people have opted in for yeah um, real ease so you so you so okay so you, you're carrying on with that as, as a message and also it's great of course because they can um communicate with you they can chat with you which is yeah. if they want if you want to so and then you've got these um this is a lead magnet, isn't it? Your spiritual, your morning routine. Yeah. And, so on. and then, uh, and then also saw you had to use a me course. I do. Yeah. Public speaking for the complete beginner, uh, mm -hmm. which is great. Cause, um, a lot of people, I mean, I know for me, I went to, you've heard of Toastmasters. Yeah. I'm a member of been yeah. member about seven years now. Yeah. Right. Yes, because that really helped me a lot because uh, I used to be uh, really scared of public speaking and that really got going to Toastmasters really helped me start to you know, enjoy it. Uh, and uh, and so I think people really don't understand the benefits of it. They just know that they're scared of it and then they just don't do it. But <clears throat> if they only realised the, the, the benefits of just putting yourself through that process out of your comfort zone and 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 getting to, to talk in front of people how how amazing that is and um so i mean i mean there's the uh i did a podcast a couple of days ago with someone who was talking about udemy and he was that was his what he was going to do but uh i've done three udemy courses now and none of them have done very well but there's other people who've done really really well on udemy so it's quite interesting isn't it so uh I yeah, yeah. Right, find it definitely in terms of marketing for it. Yeah, I think it depends how 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 much you you promote it from outside. But um, uh, and then you've got a competition. So this is so that if they uh, let this is like an ask campaign. So what is the business mission over the next three months? What do you want yeah. to achieve? So this is great for them to clarify something and just type it in that sort of helps create it as a goal but also for you it gives you a lot of information i suppose what sort of products to create you know how you can help people exactly okay. finding out pain points finding out what people's yeah. real business and helping them along their way completely mm. that's great and then some of them uh win a shadow work session with you and i also saw that you had a whole load of um youtube videos which yeah. Are, <laughs> Yeah. I was very impressed with how busy you've been because they're all basically uh, in the last month. Yeah, I've been, I've been, I've set myself a goal. I, I started to read the success principle again. Okay. And I, content can be real challenging to find, and, but I, I wanted to, to really honor my YouTube channel and do something on a consistent basis. And it wasn't necessarily about, oh, I want to get loads of views. It was much more about 
how do I get comfortable on video again? Yeah. In, on a way, in a way that's going to honor what I believe in, like Success Principles is a great book, plus allows me to put my own insights in there as well. And I thought this is the easiest way probably for me. And it, it, it definitely helped me connect with some of the audience as well, but also like remember stuff about what it means to be wealthy, what it means to be successful in my own mind. Yeah. Um, it's been really helpful as well. Okay. So success principle. I don't think I know that book. Is that Jack Canfield? Jack. Okay. Yeah. I'll just, uh, So does he say there about just creating a lot of uh, videos or something? No, his, his, his book is basically like 64 principles and it talks about all these principles are helpful for him, well, being helpful for him and people that he's know, he knows that are really successful to become more successful. And so I thought it'd be really good to look at that because that's a path that I'm constantly on. Yeah. Um, and it's a path that many people struggle with in terms of maybe identifying who they are. There's even stuff about spirituality in there in terms of making mastermind groups. And I think the great thing about YouTube is obviously you can embed it as make, make it into blog posts and repurpose it in different ways. Yes. So I just thought, this is just a great opportunity to, to have content like on tap. I know some people are like really against creating loads of content. They're like, oh, well, if you, if you create too much, you dilute your audience or you, you give them too much. But I don't, I don't believe in that. I think huh. it's, it's a long game. And, yeah, yeah. and, YouTube's a search engine, and when people are searching for certain things, like I've got to number one in certain videos above yeah. people that have got millions of views because I've learned also about the SEO element and yeah. suggestion, suggested video element of YouTube. So it's been, it's been a learning curve as well, so it's been good. Sure. I mean, um, well, I think YouTube is the long game, isn't it? I mean, these have only been up like a couple of months, but uh, it could be like in three years' time, for example, someone discovers your YouTube, you know, you become famous for something else or something, then people discover your YouTube and then they just want to consume as much content as possible and sort of watch them all. And so YouTube does really well over a long period of time. So, and also, are you repurposing these? Are you using these on other platforms as well, these videos? Yeah, I'm using some on TikTok, which I'm not oh. too on, but you can basically, TikTok gives you about 60 seconds. So what you do is you share... Yeah. The video and it gives you 60 seconds of content and then because tiktok has the link to your youtube it just helps you to grow your, that part of it as well um i'm also using some of them on igtv stories yeah. um which is helpful as well uh, but my blogs putting it on my blogs probably the best because i can then expand on what i've said and obviously have more links obviously there's links in the description of each um video on youtube but to have the links as well on your blog um it just gives gives a sense of um, more clarity and more greater purpose, especially how it builds more links as well. So, yeah. So you um, put, so I see, yes, you connect, and then the call to action is to connect with your, you on Instagram, uh, but uh, also on your blog. Yep. Do you put, you, Okay, so do you post most of these videos on your blog as well, do you? I would like to honestly say I would, yes. But um, <laughs> I've got like, I've done 50, I think I've come up to 57 videos now for the Jack yeah. Canfield series. And I've probably done about three of those because what I'm actually being extra is probably, I'm just not embedding them. I'm embedding them and I'm putting links and I'm actually writing content for the SEO for Google because obviously Google can't read video. They can no. only read text. So you have to almost do a transcript of of the stuff on your blog page as well and obviously meta descriptions and then an image and then i'm on pinterest as well so i have to do the pin image as well um so it takes me a good hour to then take it from youtube to put it onto my um make a blog out of it blog post it's a long time isn't it so do you do, you do the transcript yourself well they're only a minute aren't they so you... um kind of so i can't do a transcript word for word so i just kind of summarize what I've done and expand yeah, and stuff. Yeah. yeah. Um, but yeah, so I think it's time consuming making the um, images as well. But it's one of those things, I guess my long-term vision is like, well, eventually I'll be getting that VA and that VA will help me to do all that stuff anyway. Right. So, yeah. Okay. Um, because it's uh, like a little bit similar to what I do. 
um, I'll show you, this is my website. So I've got, what I do is um, every now and then I just sort of take, take my iPhone and I go in the kitchen, I've got a tripod and an external mic and I just, and I've got a list, I get a list of 20 or 30 um, uh, different headlines that I want to talk about. And then I just uh, sh shoot, shoot a whole load of videos and then I uh, put them in um, Camtasia and then I and then like I have like an hour thing and then I send that to um, I send that to rev.com to get transcribed and then I get the transcription and then I can just paste that into Camtasia and then it automatically adds closed captions to everything to the subtitle right. and then I split it into these sort of five five minute chunks and 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 and, and uh, export them that way so that's how I create my videos and then I put them on YouTube uh facebook um linkedin uh twitter and so on and so i have been putting them on my blog and because i've got the transcript already from mm. I, put, I use ref.com which they charge one dollar 25 per minute for a transcript i can just copy and paste the transcript on, onto my blog uh because i know that helps with uh with, with the seo and but i wish there was a way i also use a service called hootsuite uh to um and the idea is that if you um you if you start if you if you've got like uh you can upload a spreadsheet which has the headline the url of the youtube video if you just and also the date and time you want that posted and then they'll automatically post it to um uh, linkedin twitter and facebook and uh unfortunately it doesn't the, it's supposed to also post it to the blog, but that's not working at the moment. But I'm always looking for ways to automate these things. Um, yeah, I use, I use CoSchedule. I used oh, to use CoSchedule because they was really good at changing headlines and titles to make it more click-worthy and um, emotionally balanced and things like that. But um, yeah, I'll check out Hootsuite as well. Um, so CoSchedule, uh, Co do, you, do you use that? Do you still use that or not? No, I don't because I... I I found myself um, spending lots yeah. of time <laughs> scheduling. <laughs> That's the problem, isn't it? Yeah. I know you, you can do it in bulk because it's like Tailwind. Tailwind for Instagram. It's really helpful because you just, you know, maybe sit down for an hour and you schedule those things and you don't have to then touch your phone for Instagram because it does it automatically for you. Yeah. But it's, again, it's taking that time and saying, what am I going to be doing less of them? Because I'm obviously allocating this time something to something new. So something has to give. Um, so that's oh, definitely. Yeah, it's so easy to spend too much time with you because uh, I imagine, yeah, a lot of your audience is on Instagram. That'd be a great way. Of... Where is your? I've got Sumo Me there. So where is your? You don't have a link to Instagram, do you? No, I probably don't because I don't have. I for me, my traffic for Instagram is pretty low. I okay. think I've got some icons somewhere, um, probably down at the bottom. Okay. Um, to the right, on there's a widget. With the Instagram feed, um, okay. go down to the right. Yeah. Okay. So, and you're not TikTok. There, there it is. Tick TikTok. You're on as well, but a good, yeah, it's, it's uh, early days with TikTok. So I'm, I'm like, yeah, yeah. But uh, I know some people because it's a new, relatively new platform. There's not much competition on it, so it could be quite. I think for yeah, for your message and your audience, I think that could work quite well um, yeah yeah are you on tiktok <laughs> no i'm not I, I don't publish on tiktok you know i have i have looked at it just to see what it's all about but okay. uh, yeah because there, there, there was a guy that had um i think it's a mindset coach or something um oh. and he had um he managed to get i don't know was it 20 million or something in a month it was crazy really um, so yeah i think people do really well if they, they again it's the algorithms as well isn't it whatever they like yeah because uh yeah i didn't i hadn't looked into like people doing mindset stuff on it you know i thought it was just people sort of singing songs and doing dances and stuff but uh <laughs> there's, there's quite a few uh, is it um it's businesses in terms i think they said something like 30 percent of them are business owners like specifically older people that are looking for business owners so in terms of stats i think there's still there's a good market for people that are entrepreneurs there oh really yeah. Okay. 
yeah i might look into that but as you say it's one minute you just have to do like a one minute say that you have to repurpose the videos you can't just do your normal like five minute ones but yeah but it doesn't how long does it take to do a one minute video not very long at all does it so and you could do always do part one part two part three part four etc so yeah, yeah. you know yeah. so yeah something to look into but i'll show you what else i've been doing so um so do you you're are you on facebook yeah kind of not as much though to be honest i just get i i got the the instagram that links to my facebook so when it just kind of posts on instagram it posts okay. on Oh, that's great. Okay. So I use um, Facebook, I think, as my main thing if I want to advertise. And, mm. the, and what I've done is I've built up audiences now. So custom audience, so I can retarget these people. So I've got an audience of people who've watched 95% of my, of at least one of my video. Mm. Uh, and uh, there's 1,200 people in this audience. Uh, and now I can retarget them with stronger calls to action. And also I've got audience people who watch 50%, 2,500, 25%, 4.2 thousand, or through play, which means they've watched 15 seconds of one of my videos, and I've, there's 17,000 in that category. So I can retarget all these people to try and sort of um, draw them into my funnel. So that's what I really love about Facebook and uh, the ability to retarget you know, people like that. Um, and uh, and this one, for example, what would this particular video has got twenty six thousand views, mm -hmm. which is um, but I spent a hundred pounds advertising on that uh, to get those twenty six thousand views, and that is uh, but the reason I did that was to get build up this audience because this audience is like a real asset for me, and Amazing. also did you post on LinkedIn as well? Yeah, I post on LinkedIn. I do videos. I do live streams on there as well. LinkedIn Live. Oh, do so, you? Yeah. Now, how do you? Uh, I looked into Link, LinkedIn Live, but you have to fill in a form, don't you? They don't just let anyone do LinkedIn Live. Yeah, it's pretty simple. I, I applied three three times, and I got it the third time. It's, oh, the yeah. third time. So the first two times they turned you down. Yeah, exactly. Just keep trying. Just keep doing and you it. You just put the same thing, did you? And the same. Yep, it's that same thing, it's that same subject. Oh, exactly. okay. Same. It was just being persistent with it, yeah. That's great, because I'd love to, I want, really want to get into doing lives. Uh, mm -hmm. I haven't done, uh, I want to get, well, Facebook lives, but also LinkedIn lives, because I do have quite a large audience on LinkedIn, so I think it would work quite well, and uh, a lot of my audience is in there. But I've had even from a normal post, like this one, I got 2,100 views of this post. This is my my biggest post of all time and I think it's just because a lot of people commented on it and it was because it was about this book do you know this book Expert Secrets by Russell Brunson yeah I've got it yeah, yeah. I've got it. it's a yeah. great book have you got the new version though have I got the new what does the new version look like here I'll show you look it's only been out a month it's hardback and it's, no. got, it's got an extra got hundred pages in you've got the old one okay <laughs> it's a brilliant book uh, it is but anyway, so I just talked about that. So a lot of people like Russell Brunson, they like that book, so they watch his videos. So I, I sort of piggybacked off his, his fame. So this is, I think, part of the things he talks about this book and his next book, Traffic Secrets, of having a dream 100 to try and, you know, get their audience to sort of like you by, by appealing directly to their audience. Mm. If I ever did a paid ad for this, I could target people who, who like him. So, uh, and then I also came across this software. Have you heard of this? Uh, Shield app. I only heard about it yesterday, in fact. Uh, I was doing another interview uh, with, with someone who, who told me about it. And okay, good. Stats for LinkedIn. So you can see all your posts and uh, which ones have tags and so on. Because uh, it's, it's very hard to kind of, you have to go through your posts and if you're exactly. posting, oh my gosh, it's a pain. It is. Um, yeah, this is brilliant because you can sort by views, and uh, and I realised I wasn't really tagging them properly, but now I've realised <coughs> I'm going to start tagging because you know million, there might be two million people who specifically who specifically follow one tag in LinkedIn. So if you mm -hmm. get ranked for that tag, uh, those people could see your uh, your message and so on. Mm -hmm. And one other thing about having the different audiences is that I'll show you this, which is. Um, some software called 
Espresso I use for stats for um, Facebook, but you can see, so I, 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 I split test four different audiences and the people who watched with, um, this is a, an ad trying to, with an affiliate link, trying to get them to uh, sign up for uh, uh, some software. And it, if the audience where they'd watched 95% of my videos, the cost per click was 17 pence. But if they'd only watched 50% of my video, the cost was 32 pence per click. So oh, yeah. it just shows the value of um, having these warm custom audiences that basically mm -hmm. cost my, uh, halved my cost of uh, advertising. Completely, makes sense. I think I've used, um a strategy where I've used a Facebook group and I've posted in there and then I've sent them back to my page oh. and I've had like a real spike in um, viewers in engagement, not necessarily likes for the actual page, but definitely in particular posts. So I think that's been a helpful strategy, but I think, yeah, adverts, advertising is definitely a, a quicker route. I'm, I'm working on Pinterest ads at the moment oh, okay. into it because at the moment I've got 70,000 impressions per month, but I want to, scale it up so I can get some um, obviously advertising on my site which would mean that you could, you know thousands of pounds per month so which is which is more helpful. So you have did you say 70,000 impressions on um, Pinterest? Yeah. Wow. But that's yeah. I always think that that's not as like my goal is like a million. Um, <laughs> I know well that's 2,000 a day which is uh, I mean yeah, I mean, this is your uh, owl owl picture. Yeah. So do they have calls to action these Pinterest things? Yeah. So if you go on the my Pinterest profile, which oh, they went to your blog, didn't it? When I clicked that, it went to your blog. If you yeah. go to the, um, I think what happens when you go there, it just that's for sharing. Um, if you go to the Pinterest um, icon just at the bottom. Oh, this is your blog. Yes. Yeah, so this, yes, it's still blog, but, but, yeah. Oh, it's to ask. Okay, so this is inviting me to save this to my Pinterest um, uh, account. Whereas if you go to, oh, it's just loading. Go to the bottom. Yeah, go to the bottom. Is it down there? Go up a little bit to the, unless that's a full width. That might be a full width post. Um, but yeah, if you go to um, there we go. It's down there. Yeah. Is there a particular reason <laughs> you put it there? You know, rather than like at the top or at the side or something. I think my even though likes are great and stuff like that, um, I want them to go into my email list or yeah. Um, yeah that's right. Why, yeah, I know what you mean. You if you give present them with too many options, they get confused and don't do anything. But uh, yeah, because sometimes people will like to watch and you know, the quicker they go into your funnel, the quicker they convert. The yeah. longer that they kind of know you, the the shorter the more likely they're gonna just kind of be in your audience and not necessarily take action. So yeah. Right. So you want them to uh, opt in to get the lead magnet. That's your primary goal. Yeah, opt in, um yeah, convert at a high, so funnel wise, yeah, that's the ideal thing because even though I can retarget re them, it's just makes more sense for them just to be my audience. Okay, and you do these on Canva, do you, these images? Yeah. I recognize the squiggly line because I think I've got the same. <laughs> so, and also I noticed that this how to grow your business by outsourcing and hiring a VA, you've got like eight different or so post yeah. with the same thing but they just have different images that you posted at different times yeah so, basically that, yeah that's that obviously works because people yeah they like the uh like the image uh, yeah yeah so they click on that and then they've got your website there and okay and then you invite them to follow you and well this is all automatic isn't it to follow you yeah 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 Okay, so out of all your, so you do, uh, I'm very impressed by the amazing, by all the different things that you do. I mean, in a way, I'm sort of trying to do the same thing, but, but there's also the 80-20 principle. So mm. where would you say 80% of your, um, your, your people or the, the people who actually sign up and, and buy your services, 
you know, if you only had to pick one one traffic source, what would you what would you do? That'd be challenging. I think at the moment it's actually LinkedIn. Um, I got oh, really? I get clients and inquiries uh, weekly. Night it would be nice if it'd be like every day, but um, yeah. you know, there's leads every day in terms of just people like reaching out to you and going into my funnel and stuff. But in terms of hypnotherapy clients, um, people that just are inquiring about my services, it's LinkedIn. Um, and the second to that would be probably Pinterest. So but I put more energy into my Pinterest because it's, it's kind of like, and, and YouTube, because I know that those longer term games are going to give me more of a solid um, income. So it's more consistent. So, so are you saying that's the case with Pinterest as well? Yeah, with Pinterest, I've, even though it's not necessarily, um, I get leads from Pinterest, nearly yeah. maybe once or twice a week. Um, yeah. But because my long-term game is all about getting enough traffic to then get Media Vinyl, whoever else, to be on my site, I'm like thinking of it more so that way, so that when it comes to multiple streams of income, it's not just about clients, it's also about making sure that I've got income from other sources as well. Because with Pinterest, um, presumably you sort of do a post and then people only will see that for a few days or something or and, and then it's a full down to the bottom and then there's all the other posts. Is that how it works? Or is it like YouTube where it, people could really come across your post in like five years time or something? Yeah, I think because Pinterest is a search engine as well. Yeah. Um, people are searching for um, a specific term, a specific problem. So and so... They might search for outsourcing, for example. In yeah, so, so yeah, people might search for outsourcing, they might search for, um, I don't know, they might look at my board and, and see that on my board I've got stuff about careers or I've got stuff about spirituality and they'll follow my board. So anytime I got something new or I refresh it and I put it like as a, yeah, I refresh the board, they're like more likely to go into my board and click on it. So it's just a good way for them to do some search. And obviously, the more that's increased, the more people see it, the more impressions I have, the more likely they're going to be able to click. You know, it. so if I go into here and search outsourcing, mm -hmm. do you know how Pinterest algorithm works? Like these ones at the top, these ones, that's a promoted one. But are they, um, are these people with massive followings or are these the new people? Or is it, it really depends. I think the algorithm changes all the time. Um, right. From what I can gather, it's about people that have repinned. So if you're in a, um, a tribe or in a group and other people have repinned it, then it obviously goes higher up. Yeah. Um, if you put the keywords in there, it goes higher up. Um, yeah. So it's a, it's, a, it's a combination. And if you've actually, um, I think, the things like you can try out the pin, that yeah. also points to it. But the algorithm changes all the time, just like um, the Google algorithm and the Facebook. So it's one of those things where the more consistent you are, at yeah. pinning, the more likely you're going to be, get seen um, as well. Isn't it interesting that of all the different platforms uh, we've talked about a lot, like Facebook, YouTube, and uh, SEO and so on, that you said the two best for you would are LinkedIn and Pinterest because they're the ones that people often overlook. I mean, I I've, I I overlook uh, Pinterest. Uh, but um, so uh, and it's maybe think oh maybe I should look into it now but I think maybe Pinterest is it more do you think women go on Pinterest more than men well the stats show that women do go on, on it more than men yeah. but it also shows that the buyer intent behind it is that the people are looking to buy they're oh, not really? just looking, yeah so the buyer intention is much more higher than any other platform to be honest so on, on YouTube, what they're doing is they're looking for maybe solutions, right? But, you know, maybe not to buy, just to get consume information. Mm. On Pinterest, they, they go in there and know they've got a problem. That's why when you're typing in, maybe outsourcing, you might see this article, you'll see the information that's helpful, but then you're like, okay, now I need a VA. So it's much more intent on taking that purchase. Okay. Yeah, that's interesting. So, um, and... Uh, so with LinkedIn, your main, the reason that people approach you and you get clients, is it because they see your posts, your, your content? Yeah, it's a combination of seeing my content um, and people, in, some of the people that I follow, that, follow, that I engage with, they, they engage back. So that, that I get a wider audience because of that, wider, wider reach. 
Because you um, comment on other people's posts, you mean, or, or, yeah. you, or you message them directly? I, yeah, I comment on other people's posts. I, I engage. I just make it as social as, as humanly possible, not, but not too much because time is, is of, of essence and all that. Um, yes. But when I do go on LinkedIn, I don't just post straight off. I maybe engage in other people's posts, um, let them know that I'm top of their mind, and then post my own. Yeah, that's great. Because I think if you comment on someone's post, it shows up in your all activity feed, doesn't it? And it means yeah. that anyone who's following you sees like here, this is someone else's post, you commented. So now it shows up in your feed. So this might then show up in my feed because I'm connected with you on LinkedIn. So that's, uh, so uh, it's a great way of, um, yeah, it's, it's a great also of, of, of get, building good rapport with, with this person, for example, because you've just helped him get his message out there. So yeah. uh, it's a good way of starting a, a, a sort of relationship with someone. Yeah, that's great. And I guess when people mention, the other day somebody mentioned me in a post and they, they got visibility and everyone else got visibility, more people sit, you know, so I think that's also a good strategy or tactic. Um, yeah, there's so many different ways to, to, I mean, some people do comment posts, never necessarily something that I've done, but there's so many ways to get more reach. Um, some people use engagement pods. Yeah. Yes. I was going to say, you, you're not, I can't hear you because it's the video that's talking up there. It's not, not you. But <laughs> it's confusing. Um, okay. Uh, so, all right. So we've been talking about 40 minutes. Is there any, anything else uh, particularly um, that you want to say before we wind this up? Or uh, if we could sort of come to a natural uh, end, do you think? Yeah. I mean, what would you say was the, is the strategy that worked best for you? What What the platforms that work best for you and why do you think they are, that okay is? so for me um well actually linkedin is the best for me if i just had to pick one because i've got fifteen thousand followers or friends like uh, in my tier one on on linkedin so that's the one i've got my biggest audience with and also i think the uh, the average income of a linkedin um uh member is a lot higher than of any other platform uh, so I think for B2B stuff, I think LinkedIn's really good. And also just because of my background, because I used to be an accountant and stuff, you know, it gives me a sort of certain credibility that appeals to, to that market. So that'd be my number one. Uh, and number two would be Facebook, just because of the, uh, the sophistication of their uh, marketing uh, you can do and the custom audiences and the retargeting and now they've started to uh, we know now we've got facebook lives and so on and mm. now they've created this zoom type thing haven't haven't they uh which you can use in groups you know facebook groups there's a whole lot of things under the facebook um banner which which uh, I'm, I'm really going to get into awesome yeah. <laughs> So, so um, okay, yeah, I think that's that was my, my main question. I guess if you was going to give anybody who's listening to this two things that would be helpful to to leverage whatever they're doing at the moment, what would the two pieces of advice be? <laughs> to leverage what they're doing? Well, number one is definitely use video. Uh, a lot of people aren't doing that. Um, it's amazing because I talk to quite a few people and some of them come across really well, um, talking to them they would come across really well in video but then I look at their website and they haven't got any videos there and I think that's crazy because especially if they're a coach or something like that the reason someone would hire a coach is you need to um, you know you need to just to get more of a sense of them what they really are like as a person and their personality and how they could help you you just get much more of that uh, through video than through the, uh, the written word uh, so, so one is to just create videos, put it on a website so people can see you. And uh, the second tip would just be, uh, well, also just get it out there, put it on all the different platforms. If you can do it easily, which you can using something like Hootsuite to, uh, to repurpose it on different platforms. And then, um, and then use this retargeting. So custom audiences. So like have one message, pure content to new people. And once they know who you are and they, watch your stuff and engage with you 
then you can retarget them with stronger calls to action. Mm. Awesome. I'm going to be trying some of those things. So thank you. Okay. And what are your, what are your two tips then? Um, I, I think to, to know that you're not doing it for the engagements and the likes, you're doing it because you've got a great mission and purpose um, yeah. and your message matters. It's going to help change somebody's life. So right. don't necessarily give up and, and support your validation in, in those sort of vanity. Exactly. Actually, even if just one person sees it and it changes their life, then it's worth it, isn't it? It's, yeah, yeah, exactly. Exactly. So that's one thing. The next thing I would say is um, take the necessary, um, listen to your gut and your, you know, whenever you need that break, whenever you feel like something's off, they yeah. say, you know, if, it, if you don't feel the vibe, don't go live. It's, it's that type of thing. It's making sure that you are staying in alignment with um, your core values and knowing that when you are going live or when you are putting content out there that's coming from a place where you're expressing yes. not just pressing some people do things to like oh no, look at me i've got this really great award yeah, but yeah. is that to it you know impressed or to express and so make sure it's coming from the place of expression and yeah. then you'll always win regardless of what happens so that's an interesting um slogan express not impress so this is uh you see, this is something I've been coming around to thinking as well. But I mean, I just use different language, but I used to think in terms of what do people want and how can I sell to them? And I think a lot of people are in that mindset. So when you look at their videos, it just seems a bit fake. And uh, there's just all these words and it doesn't really engage me in any way. I just want to shut them down. Uh, but now I've realized it's, um, it's about just being myself being authentic and yeah. not trying to be a certain way and then I could just be really relaxed and then I could just really connect with people and it also goes back to your, your first point as well which is um n n not having particular end in mind as much rather just sort of help people which is sort of like expressing being helpful connecting with people and then you're not only is that much more pleasurable and it takes a lot less energy and it's in fact it can be quite energizing so and it's something that's very enjoyable so you'll end up producing a lot more content but also people respond to it a lot better so uh and also it's it's, it's real so we you know what you see is is what you 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 get so mm. you know what they're getting and then they're much more likely to say oh i want either want less of this which is fine or they want more of it and then they can go up your value ladder and buy more of your products and services yes yeah. awesome yeah so <laughs> thank you for inviting me on i yeah. appreciate well, thank you for coming on. Yeah, and we'll definitely have to sort of stay in touch and uh, hopefully um, see you um, again at some point in the future and to see, you know, what other things you've learned and, you know, what other things you're, you're, you're doing then, which I'm sure will be totally different because you seem to be <laughs> consuming things the way of not, and like me, just trying different things. Because the, not only is the internet changing at such a fast speed, we're, there's so much to learn. And as we try different things, we... Um, yeah. Adapt we get yeah we adapt to get better we find out what things work best for us and reach our particular audience yeah mm -hmm. okay. all right then okay well lovely speaking to you all the best you too thank you Cheers. bye bye so that was a really interesting discussion i had with ruth ellen uh i learned a lot from her particularly i well, i was i was um quite surprised because she does all these different platforms and i said if you could just pick two which ones? You said LinkedIn and Pinterest. I found that really interesting. And it made me think twice about Pinterest because I'd always written it off before. Um, so I hope you enjoyed it and I uh, hope to see you soon. Bye.